Hallelujah. Aba, siya bo suaba, ro suaka, siya. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. We bless you, O oh God. you, O oh God, who give us victory, hallelujah, through our Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, God, hallelujah, for your blood. Hallelujah, we overcame him, the devil, hallelujah, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. So we praise you tonight, God. Hallelujah. Shaba kuru suaka. Yeku su abaka. We praise you. Aku rabasi. And we worship you. Isiaka to rabasi. We thank you for the victory because of the blood. Hallelujah. Shaba aba siaku rabasi. We give you praise and honor for the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Shaba kuru suaka. Sia, sia, sia. Asua crush. We thank you, Master, in Jesus' name. Gloria. Hallelujah. Holobo Kotaya. The Rebecca to a Masakatabo, the Bakataya. The Raman Mamma 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 we thank you, Father God, but our weapons, oh Father God, are not carnal, but mighty for pulling down strongholds, oh God. And we pull down every stronghold tonight. Every stronghold of rebellion, every stronghold, Father God, of offense, every stronghold, Father God, of jealousy. Every stronghold of anger, and we decree and declare obedience in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father God, you said we shall decree a thing and it shall be established. So we decree and declare order, we decree and declare obedience, we decree and declare holiness, we decree and declare righteousness. We decree and declare healing, a sound mind in Jesus' name. We decree and declare a peace of mind. We decree and declare in the name of Jesus truth. In the name of Jesus. We apply the blood. The blood. The blood of the minds of the people. We apply the blood, Father God, from the ceiling down to the floor. We apply the blood, Father God, over the minstrels. We apply the blood over the summons. We apply the blood over the prophets. We apply the blood over the intercessors. We apply the blood of Jesus over the pastors, the elders in the name of Jesus. And we decree and declare we shall line up with the will of God. We decree and declare in Jesus' mighty name. And we thank you, O oh God, for mighty victory. Mighty victory in the house of God. Mighty victory in the body of Christ. Mighty victory over the land. Mighty victory, oh God, in Jesus' mighty name. In the families. Mighty victory, Father God, in the school system. And we decree and declare, we shall win because your word said it, oh God. And so we thank you in advance, oh God. In Jesus' mighty name. It's time to wage war. Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Rabashiande, Rabashiande, Rabakoshama, Rabashiande. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, Rabashiande, but against principalities and powers. He come on, Rabashiande, Rabakoshiande, Rabashi. We push back 
We push back. We push back. We push back. All power the darkness. Rabba shiate. Rabba kusha. Rabba shiate. Rabba shiate. Rabba ka. We war the enemies. We wage war. Rabba shiate. Rabba shiate. Rabba shi. No weapon. No weapon. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. Rabba shiate. Rabba shiate. We're strapped in the spirit. Ika, riyade ba shiade, rabo suku rabesha, rabo shiade. Oh God, we thank you, God. We thank you for the helmet, oh God, of salvation. Riyade rabo kusu, riyade ba shata, the breastplate of righteousness. Ika, riyade suku, riyade ba shata, the belt of truth. Ika. Riyade Mashika, Rabo Suku, Riyade Shata. We have our feet shod with the gospel and the preparation of peace. Riyade Su, Riyade Shaka, Rabo Shiyade Mashika. Arise, arise, our people of God. Arise, and Rabo Shiyade, and take back Ashaka. Take it back, Ishaba. Rabo Shiyade Baba Shata, Rabo Shiyade. I say to you, possess the land. Possess the land. It's time to possess the land. He called that Arabasha. Rianda Bashia de Rabasu. Rabashia de Rabashata. Rabasa. The battle is not yours, it's the Lord. Rabashia de Rabasha. Go up. Go up. Go up in your spirit. He called Tabasa. Go up. He called Tabasha. Rabashi. You can't stay in this place. You gotta go up, Ishabasiande. In the spirit, Ishanda Bakaya, Rabashiande. Thank you, Jesus. Ikata. Ya kanda lo bosi, ya kanda lo basa, ya God. He kanda lo bosi, ya kanda lo bosi, ya na ya God. Thank you, Lord God, for the sacred war, God. Father God, thank you for the ordained war, God, that you are, you have put us in, God. Father God, we thank you, O oh God, for the weapons, O oh God. They are not carnal, O oh God, but they are mighty, O oh God, through the pulling down of every stronghold, O oh God. So, Father God, we thank you, Lord God, for our armor, God. Father God, we thank you, O oh God, that we have engaged in war, God. Father God, we thank you, O oh God, for having girded us up, O oh God. Father God, we thank you, O oh God, for the helmet of salvation, O oh God. Father God, we thank you, O oh God, for just the sword, O oh God, which is your word, God. Father God, we stand, O oh God, and we fight, O oh God, in the spirit, O oh God, with war, O oh God, with your word, O oh God. Father God, we thank you, O oh God, for the battle, O oh God, is not ours, O oh God, it's the Lord's, O oh God. And Father God, we thank you, O oh God, for protecting us, O oh God. Father God, we thank you, O oh God, for your great covering, O oh God. And Father God, we thank you, O oh God. Father God, that we do not get weary, O oh God, in this war, God. Father God, we keep it moving, God. Father God, we thank you, O oh God, for having your way, O oh God. Father God, we thank you, O oh God, for every soul, O oh God, that's attached to us, O oh God. We continue to fight, O oh God, for our loved ones, O oh God. We continue, O oh God, to fight for those, O oh God. Father God, we thank you for the land, O oh God, that you have given us, O oh God. Thank you for the territory, God, in your name, Jesus. Father God, we fight in your name, oh God. Thank you, God, for the war is already won in Jesus' name, God. We thank you for the victory, God. We speak victory, oh God. Victory, oh God, to the matter, God. Victory, oh God, to the situation, oh God. Thank you, God, for shining us, oh God, with your peace, oh God, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 Jesus. Luke 10 and 19 says, Behold, I give you power, power, to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing by any 
give your glory. Demonstrate your power. Demonstrate your glory. We thank you that in the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, sickness shall bow, disease shall bow, addiction shall bow, perversion shall bow, rebellion shall bow, every knee shall bow, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father, in Jesus' name, we go forth in your power.
Welcome to Forever Praise Ministries. We love you, we love you, we love you. With the love of the Lord, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Because you are the King of Kings, we will bless you, Lord. At all times. Your praises shall continually be in our mouth. Magnify the Lord. Magnify the Lord with me. Whom the Son He has redeemed. Whom the Son He has redeemed. Clap your hands, rejoice and sing. Clap your hands, rejoice and sing. You are Lord of everything. You are Lord of everything. Clap your hands, rejoice and sing. You are the Lord of every day. You are Lord of every day. I will. I will bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, yes I will. Bless the Lord at all times. Say it again. I will. I will bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, yes I will. Bless the Lord at all times. You are waiting. 
I will bless the Lord. And you promise you never try. I will bless the Lord. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I will bless the Lord. Thursday, Friday, evening, I will bless the Lord. I got to lift up my head. I will bless the Lord. I got to give my God the glory. I will bless the Lord. Because he's been so good. I will bless the Lord. He's been so good. I will bless the Lord. He keeps blessing me. I will bless the Lord. Over and over and over. I will bless the Lord. I don't know. I will bless the Lord. If you know. I will bless the Lord. What the Lord. Have done for me. I will bless the I said Lord. He changed my world. I will bless the Lord. He changed my talk. I will bless the Lord. He changed my mind. I will bless the Lord. He saved my life. I will bless the Lord. One of these glad moments. I will bless the Lord. When this life is over, I will bless the I'm Lord. gonna put on another. I will bless the I'm Lord. gonna tell my story. I will bless the Lord. Of how he brought me up. I will bless the Lord. To bring me I will bless the Lord. He's always been right. There. I will bless the Lord. Through thick and through thin. He has done. He has done great things for me, so I will. He has done. He has done great things for me, so I will. Oh, he has done. He has done great things for me, so I will. So many, many great things. He has done great things for me, so I will. He has done. He has done great things for me. He has done great things for me.
Say it's 
Hallelujah. Come on, lift those hands. This Shondoro Masita. Rondoro Mushita. Kanda. Yes, God. Mandala Mushita. Hallelujah. Oh, Ramadus. Hallelujah. Oh, Ramadus. Hallelujah. Come on, all of my dios. Hallelujah. Come on, all of us. Glory be to God. The love of she am Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Dear Lord. Some of you are already sensed this, but there's an unusual attack. Hear me, unusual. Not unusual to God, but it could be very unusual to man because the enemy has launched an attack. That's why we pray in advance. And it comes in many forms, and one of the greatest is the spirit of distraction. I want you to hear this. Unusual way, because it would appear to be something that's very natural happening, but it's demonic in nature. I want you to hear this. And I'm not a super spiritual person where I think everything the devil. I don't blame everything on the devil. But I know when it is him. And so I want to bring to your attention in this season the attack of distraction. Let me tell you about a distraction. A distraction comes in and things that we are familiar with or things that are happening in our lives. Okay, the enemy will get in it to, to why? Stop progress, one. Derail saints that's on task or keep the ones that's trying to get on but off, off track, okay? You got to see the enemy as he is in the season. So it's very critical, it's very vital that you are in tune to the spirit of God. God. You have to know when to pay attention and when not to. And what I mean by that, some things we have to ignore the devil. 
And the only way that we can really ignore the enemy is if we have real faith in God, okay? Otherwise, you can look the other way and stress out, have fear and doubt. And I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about look the other way and see Jesus, have hope and faith. It's a difference. But this attack is unusual. When I got up yesterday morning, the Lord began to speak to me in one thing after another. It's been happening involving the saints. But we have to stay what? On the offense. Very prayerful. And we have to stand on the things that God promised us in the previous season. Amen. God speaks to us in previous seasons to keep us what focused in the present. Amen. So some of us get into situations and we forget what God said. We forget what he said. When he got here, he prophesied to you. He encouraged you. And things were just fine. Right? And then things happened and you forget. But you praise them when you got the word. Amen. So we have to take, stay on task. Amen. That's when we need to work the word. That's when we have to say, God, you said, God, you promised. God, I know what you spoke over this situation. I'm going to wait on it. Amen. God is in control. It doesn't matter how out of control your life is. God is yet in control. There's nothing outside of his power. He can speak. And things can turn just like that. Amen. So that tells me that there are things that we must get in our trials. Amen. Come on, Pastor. We're ever learning. Always learning. Amen. It never ceases. We have to be on task. Stay very focused in this season you need help open your mouth amen you need Jesus to move you need some encouragement open your mouth amen it's very important to be covered we're going to continue on being covered. Amen. It's very vital that we as God's people are in the right place at the right time. Amen. Sometimes things can seem right. Amen. Sometimes we get mixed up flesh. We think flesh is so right and feels so good. You can think it's the spirit. Uh, but the devil is a lie. Amen. I told somebody, trick no good. Today, trick no good. The devil is a lie. Amen. That's why we need the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. And I'm so grateful that I have him. Amen. Amen. The covering. Being covered is vital. Not just in the it being in a church home, you can be in the church home but lack spiritual covering. Amen. You can. Why being out of place in your heart, in your mind. Amen. It's critical. Amen. Very vital.
Thank you, Jesus. Stand on your feet just for a moment. Yes, God. Rondo Moshut. Shandelele Moshut. Yes, Romance. Yes, God. Come on, Lord, we should. Glory and soul. Yes, God. We're all seeing that. Yes, God. Yes, God. chosen you in your family to be a forerunner. Come to the altar. You know it. You know it. See, see how you move it quick? You know God called you to stand peculiarly in your family. Rosanda le kamsi. You know God's country. I want 
want you to listen. When I was at home today and I was praying, the Lord showed me that it's very critical for us to stand in the gap. It's critical right now that we stand against the enemy in this house. It's very vital that we don't have anything in our life that will cause a breakdown in our standing. I've said it many times, but I, I, it's critical for this time. Everything that I have said to you all, over the last few years and spoken to your spirit is for this moment in time. It's for this moment. And if you have ever heard me before, or hear me, if you have ever heard the spirit of God speak through me ever, this time is critical. And we've got to stay and see the salvation of God. And your biggest obstacle is you. It's with us here. That's your biggest ob obstacle. You can't even get in God's way in this hour, in this moment. Because guess what? Times change. There's been a shifting in time. There's a shifting in the world, and there's a shifting that has happened in the kingdom. Amen. And the devil is going to do what he does, and we must do what God has called us to do, and that's bridge the gap. You don't have to go to a class to get this. You have to live it. This only comes by the way of the Spirit. You can't be taught it. You have to walk it out. And you, this critical that we decree and declare change. And that we come against the enemy and his plan. Very critical time. So the rest of this year, there will be times of prayer that I will call times of prayer seasons of prayer seasons of declaration we will come and declare it. okay I want you to hear me what I'm about to say there is a power of perversion a diabolical plan that has been established straight from hell that is attacked the church this spirit of perversion hear me and it has jumped, is jumping into the children, making the children believe and think that it's okay to be any kind of way. You know what I'm talking about? There, it, it's a plot in hell against the body. Okay? This is what the Lord told me for this hour. And we have to bridge the gap in prayer because the enemy is coming to the weak one. The weak children, the rejected seed, are the ones that the enemy points and chooses to attack. It's an attack of perversion, sexual perversion. Hear me, hear the spirit. Okay. Right now, going on right now. And the Lord has to purge it. He has to purge it out. And the purge starts with who? The forerunners, us. The ones that are supposed to establish a new covenant. Some of y'all covenants have been broken. And there's been a crack, a door to enter in to attack our seed. And we have to bridge it. That's what bridging the gap means. Not just going up, having a good time in prayer of decree. We have to bridge it by righteousness. That's the only way we can close the door. The door must be closed from the enemy and we've got to stand in position 
and righteousness right now or there will be righteous people positioned in prayer. But being positioned in prayer is very critical right now. Not about your gift, not about anything. That doesn't matter. We have to let these little things go. It means nothing in the big scheme of things. When we stand before God, God is going to say, did you do what I told you to do? Did you say what I told you to say? Our obedience is critical, not your gift. So we have to reverse, and I'm going to say this. If any of you have an art, would your brother go to them now? If there's an art, or if you know your brother has an art with you, go to them now. If you know your brother has an art with you, go. Or if you sense, are you unsure? Go to your brother if you're unsure. But if you sense or if you feel like there's not a... Go to them. If you said there's a breakdown, go. what you felt in the weeks prior to today. If you're unsure about somebody, go to them. Go to them. Maybe, maybe nothing, but clear your heart. situation is worth losing. Nothing. 
nothing, nothing can be in the way of your standing in this season. This hour is very critical that we stand. Now as a body, Father, in Jesus' name. Father, we repent right here. If we have been the cause of a breach, we repent, oh God, and ask you to forgive us for allowing our heart and our emotions, our feelings to get in the way of what you desire to do. Father, right now we reposition ourselves that we will stand in the gap for our family, for our church, for the sinners, for the ones that are lost, oh God. Right now we reposition ourselves and Father, I ask that you will release a corporate anointing upon us, your people. We ask that the oil will begin to flow down. Come on, lift those hands. As a body, Lord God, we ask that you will release the oil down upon us. And Father, right now, we renounce every word that we spoke out of our mouth, out of ignorance, out of hurt, anger, pain. Father, we renounce, oh God, and ask you to forgive us for the words, oh God, that we have spoken. They were not according to your will. We repent, oh God. And Father, right now, we establish a fresh covenant with you. In the name of Jesus, because we understand how critical and vital it is for us to stand in the gap and not be moved until we see the salvation of the Lord. And Father, right here we decree and declare that the devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. We thank you, O oh God, in the name of Jesus for your blood is sufficient. You paid the price on Calvary for this purpose. Oh God, and we stand unified as one in the name of Jesus. And we give you praise, oh God, for speaking with clarity in the name of Jesus. We thank you, oh God, for speaking to us again that you will be magnified and glorified upon this earth. We hear what you are saying. And we will not waver in this very hour. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. And you may be seated. Amen. And for the sake of time, amen, we're going to skim through Genesis, the 18th chapter. Share what the Lord has given me. Amen. Genesis 18 chapter. I'm going to skim through it. We're going to go through 18 and 19 and then go through our sheet. And then position ourselves for prayer. Amen. Amen. Thank you, God. You must be covered by God. The Lord is positioning the intercessors to stand in a gap for our families, amen. Our loved ones on our job, wherever your position may be. And the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre. And he sat in the tent during the heat of the day. And he lifted his eyes and looked. And lo, three men stood by him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent, from the tent door and bowed himself toward the ground. And said, My Lord, if now I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away, I pray thee, from thy servant. Yet a little water, I pray you, be fetched, and wash your feet, and rest yourselves under the tree. And I will fetch a morsel of bread, and comfort ye your hearts, after that ye shall pass on. For therefore are ye come to your servant. And they said, So do. 
as thou hast said. And Abraham hastened into the tent unto Sarah and said, Make ready quickly three measures of fine meal, knead it, and make cakes upon the earth. And Abraham ran unto the herd and fetched a calf tender and good and gave it unto a young man, and he hasted to dress it. And he took butter and milk and the calf which he had dressed and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree, and they did eat. And they said unto him, Where is Sarah thy wife? And he said, Behold, in the tent. And he said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah thy wife shall have a son. And Sarah heard it in the tent which was behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age, and it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. Therefore Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord, being old also? Also the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I of a surety bear a child which am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, I will return it to thee according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. Then Sarah denied, saying, I laugh not, for she was afraid. And he said, Nay, but you did laugh. Amen. So Sarah told a lie. And the men rose up from thence and looked toward Sodom. And Abraham went with them to bring them on the way. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do, seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed? in him for I know him that he will command his children and his household after him and they should keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him and the Lord said because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great and because their sin is very grievous I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it which is coming to me and if not I will know and the men turned their faces from thence and went toward Sodom, but Abraham stood yet before the Lord. So he's the place of the intercessor. Amen. And Abraham drew near and said, Will thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Amen. So Abraham, since the judgment was coming upon the land, so he, he beseeched God and prayed that he wouldn't allow the righteous people to die with the wicked ones. Amen. I want you to remember that. Peradventure, there be 50 righteous within the city. Will thou also destroy and not spare the place for 50 righteous that are within? That be far from thee to do after this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked, and that the righteous should be as the wicked that be far from thee. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? And we know go all the way down. Let's go to th verse 31. And he said, Behold, now I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord. Peradventure there should be 20 found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for 20 sake. And he said, Oh, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak yet this once. Peradventure 10 shall be found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for 10 sake. And the Lord went his way, and as soon as he had left communing with Abraham, and Abraham returned into his place. Let's go to chapter 19. And there came two angels to Sodom at even, and Lot said in the gate of Sodom, and Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. And he said, Behold now, my lords, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house, and tarry all night, and wash your feet, and ye shall rise up early, and go on your ways. And they said, Nay, but we will abide in the street all night. And he pressed upon them greatly, and they turned in unto a him. And entered into his house, and he made them a feast, and did bake unleavened bread, and they did eat. But before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed the house round, both old and young, all the people from every quarter. And they called unto Lot and said unto him, Where are the men which came into this night? 
unto thee this night. Bring them out unto us that we may know them. And Lot went out at the door unto them and shut the door after him and said, I pray you, brethren, do not do so wickedly. Behold, now I have two daughters which I have not known, man. Let me, I pray thee, bring them unto you, and do ye to them as is good in your eyes. Only unto these men do nothing, for therefore came there under the shadow of my roof. And they said, Stand back. And they said again, This one fella came in to sojourn, and he will, and he will needs be a judge. Now will we deal worse with thee than with them? And they pressed sore upon the man, even Lot, and came near to break the door. But the men put forth their hand and pulled Lot into the house to them and shut the door. And they smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness, both small and great, so that they wearied themselves to find the door. Amen. Let's go down to verse 24. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah, brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities and that which grew upon the ground. But his wife looked back from behind him and she became a pillar of salt. And Abraham got up early in the morning to the place where he stood before the Lord. And he looked toward Sodom and Gomorrah and toward all the land of the plain and beheld and lo, the smoke of the country went up as the smoke of a furnace. And it came to pass when God destroyed the cities of the plain that God remembered Abraham and sent Lot out of the midst of the overthrow when he overthrew the cities in which Lot dwelt. And Lot went up out of Zor and dwelt in the mountain and his two daughters with him for he feared to dwell in Zor and he dwelt in a cave he and his two daughters and the firstborn said unto the younger our father is old and there is not a man in the earth to come in and to us after the manner of all the earth come let us make our father drink wine and we will lie with him that we may preserve seed of our father and they made their father drink wine that night, and the firstborn went in and lay with her father. And he perceived not when she lay down, nor when she arose. And it came to pass on the morning that the firstborn said unto the younger, Behold, I lay yesternight with my father. Let us make him drink wine this night also, and go thou in, and lie with him, that we may preserve seed for our father." And they made their father drink wine that night also. And the younger rose and lay with him, and he perceived not when she lay down, nor when she arose. Thus were both the daughters of Lot with child by their father. And the firstborn bare a son and called him Moab. The same is the father of the Moabites unto this day, a contaminated seed. And the younger she also bare a son and called his name Benamai. The same is the father of Amnon unto this day. Worthless people. Amen. So let's go to our sheet. The Lord is positioning the intercessors. And I find it pretty, um, you know, I always read you know, Genesis over every year I go through the book of Genesis and just allow God to show me things in this uh, particular passage. And one of the things that stood out to me as I was studying how God allowed Lot's uh, life with his children to be spared knowing the evil they will do, okay? He allowed them, okay? He spared them along with Abraham, the righteous one, but he allowed all the other ones to be what burned up. Amen. And so I, I begin to just look and compare it to the time that we're living in today. It is almost likened to Sodom and Gomorrah. It is a whole lot. If you read and go back and you study and you look at the history and how um, the heartlessness and the, and the perversions and all the like, it is in our time. 
right now. And that's why there is so much devastation. God is allowing things to happen. And sometimes righteous people are consumed with unrighteous people. Amen. And then when I began to think about it, I said, it's probably a lot of righteous people are consumed is because they didn't sense that it wasn't the will of God to even be in the land that they were in. Okay. There are times I know many people that have moved in other lands, other regions, and the Lord told them not to, and they are not here today. Amen. So it, it's uh, most of them had uh, passed away in tragic accidents or things that tragically happened. Had they not been there, they would have been alive today. Okay, so it's very critical that we know even the locations and the, th the places, the land that we live in, because there are some lands that are what? Cursed. That is. Okay, look at the hurricanes and the floodings and all those things that are happening. That is symbolic to a cursed land. Amen. So when the, the land is cursed, God will allow things to happen to it. Amen. But it's very critical that we know where we should be. Amen. We know where we should be. We know the people that we should be connected to. The things and the decisions that we make, we must know it is God. Why? It could be our life. It could be our lives. It's very critical. Amen. And so there's not, nothing I don't do unless I seek God with it. I don't care what it is. I always seek the heart of God in every decision I make. Why? Because there's safety in the will of God. Amen. And so I begin to look at some of these people in the different lands. And then because of that, we begin to rationalize and justify and begin to hear things that are not true when we do things our own way. Amen. So that's what we're going to. And so thank God for Abraham being positioned for his family. Amen. And we're going to understand that in a minute. Amen. So we're not looking at the position in the church. We're focusing on the position in your family, okay? So some of you might say, I'm not an intercessor in the church, but you're an intercessor in your family. And you can still be an intercessor for the church. You just don't have the position. Amen. So in position doesn't mean that you don't, you don't have to pray. Amen. Some of us have accountable position that you're going to be accountable to pray in a different manner. Amen. Like our intercessors, they are accountable to get up at 530 in the morning. Everybody don't want to get up at 530 in the morning. So that means you don't need an accountable position. Amen. So you may be just as well, just as good at home praying for the church because you don't want to be accountable. Amen. These musicians, we may have people that can sing, dance, okay, but they play because they are accountable under the authority of Jesus Christ in this house to play. So they have to come to church to get on the piano, play the drums because they're accountable, okay? So being an intercessor is not always a position in the church, but it may be in your family. And both of them are critical and very vital. Amen? Or you may pray for the church. Amen? You just don't have an accountable position. Amen? And then sometimes God uses some of us best out of groups because we, don't know, we can't get along with people. And guess what? God in his loving, just his heart, he may still want to use you, but he won't connect you with you with people because he knows you can't connect right now. So we got to know the heart of God and understand what God is doing. Everybody don't go the same route. Amen. But as long as you're going somewhere, you're okay. Amen. Don't stay stuck. Ezekiel 22 and 30. So I sought for a man among them who will make a wall and stand in the gap before me on behalf of the land, that I should not destroy it, but I found not one. Therefore I have poured out my indignation on them. I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath, and I have recompensed their deeds on their own heads, says the Lord. So it's critical. God will one person can save a nation. Ten people praying in agreement with God, faithfulness can do what? Save a land. So it's critical in this hour because we understand and we see where things are going, right? 
It's clear. All you got to do is look at the news. It's clear where society has gone. Amen. And it must be clear where we're going. Amen. We can't be all over the place. We have to make our election sure unto God. It's critical. Amen. But you got to get over you. Luke 13. Then he began telling them in this parable, a certain man had a fig tree that had been planted in this vineyard. And he came looking for fruit on it, but did not find any. And he said to the vineyard keeper, for three years I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree and found none. Cut it down. Why does it even use up the ground, depleting the soil and blocking the sunlight? But he replied to him, let it alone, sir, just one more year until I dig around it and put fertilizer. And if it bears fruit after this, fine. But if not, cut it down. Proverbs 16, 18. Pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Abraham's intercession. Abraham's compassion for the people of Sodom and Gomorrah reveals the heart of a man who cared greatly for others, including those who did not follow God. So an intercessor that may not... Intercessor has to love people, the good and the bad, okay? You got to love people. You have to love what you're doing. You have to be called to it. You have to have compassion. Amen? So let's, we're going to look at Abraham as far as his position and his heart to be positioned right now. We have to have a heart. Some of us are have heart at best, and so God can't use us the way he desires to. In fact, the angelic visitors who visited Lot were threatened by men of Sodom who desired to have sex with them. Though Sodom's citizens were wicked, Abraham did not wish to see their destruction. Like Abraham, we are called to have great compassion for others, including those whose lives do not follow God's ways. Also, we must ultimately accept God's judgments, even when his decisions are not our desired choices. Everybody is not going to be spared. Some people are going to get chastening, and we can't do anything about it. I'll give you an example. Some lands that we pray, there are people that pray for the lands, like when you hear the hurricane coming, I'm sure we, the intercessor, I even pray. I pray for the land. But some, some, some land, God, what? He judges, and he's not going to withdraw his hands. Amen. And, and, that is so because of the previous seasons that God had been trying to get to them, and then all of a sudden at the end, they want to change. It doesn't always turn God's heart. So we have to be very careful when we take our time turning or praying or doing what we're supposed to do. You may have six months, nine months, nine years, 10 years, 11 years, 12, 20 years. Who knows? I don't know how many years that God is going to give you to get yourself right. But when the door shut, it shuts. Amen. And there's nothing we can do about it. There's nothing. But pray and watch and, and pray that the people will make it through it. Amen. That is always our prayer. That is always my prayer as an intercessor for this house is that what? That the people will get it right and not be judged. Amen. It is never my heart to see judgment upon anybody. I'm, almost, I'm always praying for mercy. I'm always giving them another time. But there are sometimes God said, no, I have to. Some of our chastening is good for others to see. Amen. Let me say that again. Some of us need to be chasing in front of people so that people can see that God loves us and he whoops us too. Some of us get whoopings and have to go through it and heal right in front of people. You know what I'm talking about? Some of us have to go through things and be chastised while everybody in the church that you've done wrong, know that you're doing wrong, and see that you're getting a whooping, and what? It brings the fear of God on us, okay? So there's, there's all kind of things that God does with his people that are called by his name, and it is not always blessings, amen? It's not always blessing, but it's a blessing to be whooped and not killed, 
Amen. So it's always a blessing even when you get spanked. He, thank God he didn't kill us. Okay. Amen. Also, we must ultimately accept his judgment, as I said, when his decisions are not our desired choices. Amen. And even when it may not come with just being positioned, anything God tells us to do, if it's not favorable to us, we can't do it. Amen. And no matter how much you want to do it, how much you like it, how much it seems right to do something that you want to do, if it's not God's will, it's not your fit. It's not. And it will ultimately bring what? Trouble. Ultimately. Amen. It may seem like it's prosper and everything is okay because it looks like, no, we cannot compromise in this season. Abraham's request for their cities to be spared was denied. God sometimes says no to our request, too, even when we pray with good intentions. The Lord may have other plans that we do not understand, yet which part of his perfect will Yet, which are part of his perfect will. So there's sometimes that God say no, and he means no. We don't want to be like Balaam. Amen. When the Lord told him not to go, and he went to God again, he said, well, go on and go. Go on and go. Go on and go. And a donkey was like, no, don't. Trying to stop him. The donkey knew that he was wrong. Amen. So we don't want to beg and ask God and pray, and God let us have it. Just to do what? Spank us. Oh, some of us go on some deep intercession. God, give me this house. Give me this house. God, give me this house. And then this it, the house come up. And all of a sudden we think, oh, it's $450,000. You know, we know we can't afford $450,000. Or you go out and you're driving a, a Chevette. I always say Chevette because that's my first car. And you go out and get a Maserati. And you know you have Chevette money. Amen. But shut up. We said, God gave me this. God blessed me because the door was open. Every door does not mean it's God. Trust me. Amen. And so a lot of charismatic people are deceived because of a door, and we believe it's God. Every door is not God. Amen. So we have to have discerning hearts. And the only way we can have discerning hearts if we're not what? Selfish, pride, greedy, or other things going, are going on in our heart. It blocks the mind of God. It blocks sensitivity. And don't be somebody that's feeling. You're feeling. You can feel. You're so feeling and touching. You're emotional. You may really get mixed up. Because sometimes your emotion feels like the Holy Ghost. We don't know the difference. And it's critical that we know what's God and what's flesh in this season. It's very vital. So his request was denied. God sometimes says no to our request too. Even when we pray with good intention, the Lord may have other plans that we do not understand. Abraham's guests were about to leave him and make their way to Sodom to execute judgment against that city. Although the two angels went on their way to Sodom, the Lord continued to speak with Abraham and share with him what he intended to do to that city. The Lord revealed his plans to Abraham because he trusted him. God has to trust us in this season. True intercession always begins with a revelation from God. True insight. I mean, not a revelation from a book that you read or, or a, a class that you were in. These revelations has to come straight from God, the will of God, the heart of God for what? His purpose and his glory. We need a real revelation. God revealed to Abraham that he was going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Immediately, Abraham thought of his nephew Lot and was concerned for his welfare. To intercede for others, effectively, we need God's revelation, but we also need humility in approaching God. Not God, you know, you know I, I deserve it. 
I've been waiting for five years for this car, or I've been waiting for five years for this increase. God, now I'm this and I'm that. I need, it, I need you to move for me because of things that are not favorable. So unfavorable conditions for you does not mean that you're ready for blessing. God may have you in an unfavorable condition or position to develop you. And if you don't get it in this unfavorable position, you're going to get it in the ones that you choose. And which is not good. Amen. It's not good to move outside of God's will. Never. So we need humility in approaching God. Not go to God because you feel you deserve it. No. God want to make sure you're ready for it. Amen. And we want God to feel like we deserve what he's doing. We deserve. Amen. There is almost a sense of who am I that I should plead with God. Because God has given someone a revelation that does not make that person more spiritual. Satan fell because of pride. And he will subtly seek to make intercessors proud because of the revelation that God gives them. With the revelation and humility, Abraham approached the Lord boldly with his request. We find a similar boldness in Queen Esther, who faced the possibility of death for approaching the king without his permission, but nevertheless approached him boldly. Amen. She said, I will go to the king, which is against the law, and if I perish, I will perish. Why? Because she knew it was God. Amen. Now, that's the difference when we go boldly and, and it's our flesh. Then we go boldly and we know it's God. You can go in faith knowing that you may lose your life, but I know it's God. It's very critical that in this season that we know exactly what God is saying to us, beloved. Is very critical. It's very, very vital that we know how to pray and what to pray in this season. It's critical and very vital, amen, in this hour. Why? It could be your life or somebody else's. It could be, amen. I'm, I'm sure like once my daughter was going out of town and I, this was months before she had, a, a little time before she went and I said, I don't sense that's where you should go. I don't, I don't sense that, Mariah. And she was like, okay. Because, you know, I don't sense, because, you know, I always pray. No matter what she say, I'll go to the Holy Ghost. And, and the, I didn't know that the, her trip had changed. But had she gone where she went, it was right in the midst of the hurricane. Right in the midst. Right there. But I told her in advance. Right there. I said, I don't sense. Right there immediately. So when you get to... A place where you're sensitive to the Holy Spirit. I don't have to go to Moshiki and Kosata. It hit my spirit right there. Uh -uh. If I say no, right there, I, I don't have to go and pray. I don't even think about it again. Once I say uh uh to you, I don't go to God again because I know it. I know the spirit that lives in me. Okay? So you acquire that sensitivity to God when you spend time in prayer. Amen. Not open prayer, secret prayer. Amen. Open prayer does not grow you. Secret prayer, intimate prayer, personal prayer with God. Okay? Sacrificial prayer develops you. Amen. So some of us say, I'm not growing. Are you praying? Amen. Or do you just want to be on the prayer team or be connected to prayer or be a part of something? No, you have to have an intimate prayer life with God. And that does not mean 10 hours a day. Because some of us pray 10 hours and have no power, have no sensitivity, nor intimacy. Amen. So if the quality of your heart makes the quality of your prayer. Amen. Quality, not quantity. Amen. Oh, I would have been delivered years before I got delivered if it was the quantity. Because I was religious so I could pray six hours on my face. Quantity. And came up still angry. Still bitter. Still. Still. Amen. So I learned it was the quality of my heart in my lifestyle. Abraham based his intercession on the character of God. Asking the question, shall not the judge of all earth do right? 
fearing that he may sweep away the city and not spare the righteous. God is righteous and will sometimes allow the righteous to be destroyed with the wicked. God's heart is for all to be saved and takes no joy in seeing not one person suffer unjustly. Never God's heart. Abraham continued to plead with the Lord until he knew that Lot would be saved. So Abraham knew that there was something in Lot's life. Amen. So there are times that you can sense that there's things in people's lives that you are praying for and say, God, please have mercy on them. Amen. Not get them. Get them. Get them, God. Show them, God. Let them feel me, God. Don't let them wake up until you, they know that they've done me wrong or, you know, that's, that's witchcraft. Send your spirit over to them and shake them in their sleep until they know it. That's the devil. Let them feel what I'm going through. Let them feel me. Let them be angry. Oh, God, that's the devil. You can't pray like that. That's witchcraft. Amen. So somebody said, well, how do you know what comes in your mind when somebody cross you first? Oh, they so cute. No. What comes in your thoughts when you walk away from them, amen, after somebody cross you? Do you go home and think about it, think about it, think about it, and ponder over it, and then pick up the phone and say, the Lord told me that all of a sudden you heard from the Lord. But you know, you were infumed. You were angry. You kept thinking about this situation. Then you pick up the phone and call them in your flesh. God didn't speak to you. You spoke to yourself. Amen. And then you know, then you begin to, to blot out what, what they've done. And no, God don't even tell us to deal with people like that. He said, forgive them. Amen. And if he know that you have an issue with forgiveness, you're going to keep getting offended until you what? Forgive. Till you learn how to don't say anything, don't react. Or don't try to fix it. Step back. Amen. So intercessors are developed and most of the time in offensive situations. I'm going to say that again. If you're called to stand in your family, in my family, you got to be made of something. Amen. And you got to get through the church. You have to master the people in the church, beloved. Some of y'all don't master the church, but you want to go out to the nation. But you don't even want to talk to people in the church. You get offended with people in the church. You don't have a governmental power. You don't have a governing authority if you can't have, don't have a local authority. How can you go out and go and say, I'm going to go to Africa and deal with those powers? You can't even deal with the power of saying somebody turning away from you and not speaking to you today. But you want to go out. You want to go, that's the thing in our time. We go to Africa. So what? You go to Africa. So what? You went to Africa. How about Sunnybrook? How about Redding? Roseline? Or where you live? Fort Wright? Fort Mitchell? Westchester? Fairfield, wherever you live. You can't even master somebody cutting you off and getting fumed in a car. You want to go out to the nations? Some of y'all don't have a local anointing. You don't have a governing anointing. The local anointing deals with your local, so who's in local me? You have to learn how to deal with your own high powers and your high-minded self. The high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, that's you. If you can get over you, then you can get over them. You can't even master it right here. You can't master nobody speaking to you. But maybe God don't want people to speak to you in this season. Maybe God don't want somebody to come and hug you and call you in this season. Some seasons are quiet seasons. They, they're called quietness. Where I'm not going to let people talk to you or prophesy to you or connect to you. I'm not going to even allow your pastor to prophesy to you because it's quiet. And you want to be made, get in a quiet season and chaos in your life. Oh, I'm going to tell you the perfect environment. Chaos in your life, chaos in your mind, and God's not speaking. 
You want to grow. You want to see what's in your life. Let that happen. Let's see what you think about. Do you want to, I want to lead a church. I'm going to go. God is all of a sudden you, this, my season's up. My time is up. Why? You offended. Amen. Because God makes us in environments that's conducive for him to move on you. Not conducive for you, but he brings fire in the midst of your heart around you to develop you so you can see just how cute you are. Real cute. Okay, sure. That we're talking about the character of God. And why we have to be made to stand for our families. Amen. And sometimes it's tougher in the church. Y'all see, it's tough in the church. Shabba. Get the people. Tongue-talking people. Praying people. People that been to all kind of classes. Then they come to here and expect to be something. To expect to be acknowledged because I've been, I've been there too. And guess what? In the most classes, as a matter of fact, I got set down after I was in all these classes, got all these certificates, all this stuff. God said, you're not qualified. You're not qualified. You got the paper, but you don't have a heart. Amen. So the development of the heart is more critical than development of your intellect. So some of us are intellectually smart, are intellectually knowledgeable of things, but you have no spirit. You're spiritually discerned. That's what the Bible says. It's all in flesh. Amen. So you have to be made to stand in the gap, even for your family. Amen. Amen. The enemy's plan is to contaminate the youth. Okay. So we're going to see and we're going to look at Sodom and Gomorrah and see what's happening today. Amen. Because the devil is a liar. Genesis chapter 19 records the two angels disguised as human men. Visiting Sodom and Gomorrah, Lot met the angels in the city square and urged them to stay at his house. The angels agreed. The Bible then informs us before they had gone to bed, all the men from every part of the city, both young and old, surrounded the house. They called to Lot. We are the men who came to you tonight. Bring them out. Where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out to us so that we can have sex with them. The angels then proceed to blind all the men of Sodom and Gomorrah and urge Lot and his family to flee from the cities to escape the wrath that God was about to deliver. Lot and his family flee the city. And then the Lord rained down burning sulfur on Sodom and Gomorrah from the Lord out of the heavens. Thus he overthrew those cities and the entire plain, including all those living in the cities. In the light of the passage, the most common response to the question, what was the sin of Sodom and Gomorrah? Sexual perversion, homosexuality, and great. Clearly, homosexuality was part of why God destroyed the two cities. The men of Sodom and Gomorrah wanted to perform gang rape on the two angels who were disguised as men. That's the point. That's what they wanted to do. At the same time, it is not biblical to say that homosexuality was the exclusive reason why God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. The city of Sodom and Gomorrah were definitely not exclusive in terms of the sins in which they indulged. But greatly was that. Okay, great. It, it had got out of hand. Okay. And so in our time, guess what? I'm ashamed of the devil. It has gotten out of hand. Okay. In our city alone, we don't even have to go beyond, but now it is acceptable. And the devil is a liar. It is a power. It is a contaminating power that is entering to the minds of the people. Amen. And so what we have to do, we can bridge the gap, okay, come against it. 
But we have to position our heart first. The reason that some of these things are not, or let me say God is, has not been able to encourage us the way he wants us to is because in our heart there's things that are not dealt with. Okay? They take the place of encouragement. Okay? Like for an example, let's say I want, I want an elevation on my job and I'm consumed with my elevation on my job. I want to get an elevation. I want to get an elevation. I want to get an elevation. And I'm discouraged. Okay? And so I go to work and I, all I see is I want to be right. I want to get, I'm, I'm discouraged because I want, I want this position. I feel like I should get it. So my mind is consumed okay, with my job, and so I'm missing hearing God's voice. It's blocking me because a one thing is in the way, so I can't hear. And then problems begin to arise in our family, and it catches us off guard. We didn't sense it. We didn't discern it. We didn't feel it because something else blocked it. God always warns us first, okay, so there's always, give me an example, and Zach's not here. My son Zachary, I was up oh, the night before. I was going to text him and say, Zachary, be careful who you hang around at school tomorrow. You know? And then I said, well, no, I'm just going to pray because he gets upset when I tell him. So I'm going to wait. I'm not going to tell him tonight. I'll tell him in the morning. So the next morning, I was so tired that I didn't want to get out of the bed. I get out the bed and make sure Zach is up and get on this bus. And so I pray, oh, God, I give you praise right now. I thank you for it. And so I get a call from the principal and said, you need to come get Zach. And I said, okay. And I said, they, I said, well, what happened? He said, well, Zach was in the hallway, and somebody was slamming the doors in the hallway. Okay, and I said, okay, and so I know Zach, what Zach was going to say, I didn't do it, okay. And when I had, Mariah had to go because I was getting my hair done, so Mariah had to go pick him up. I said, you got to go get Zach because they want him to leave right now. So there was another kid in there who said the other boy did it. They told him he did it, but because Zach was in the hallway, he ran away from it. They thought that he was involved, okay, because I know my son Zach, that in the midst of something, he'll laugh and goof off and say, and, and he'll look like he's a part of it, but he's really goofing off, what makes it still wrong. So he got in trouble too. Okay, and so I said that to say that every time my son or anything happened with my kids, I get it first. I get it first because I'm in tune to the Holy Ghost. Okay, and there are some times that God won't tell you everything, but you'll have a quickening, a sense in your spirit to pray. Okay, and so I pray and I was like, see, Zach. You know, blah, 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 blah. He knows, and my kids know, that their mama is in tune to the Holy Ghost when it comes to them. Now, I'm not saying that God, he doesn't always want us to know things. Sometimes he won't allow you to know because he's doing something bigger. But for the most part, when it comes to, to deep contaminating things, God will let us know. He put us ahead of the enemy. And some of us don't have that sensitivity because something is blocking it and your children are in trouble. So we need a greater sensitivity so we can be ahead of the enemy and know how to deal with our kids properly in the spirit. Amen. But some of us don't have it because we're displaced. So it may not be with the children, maybe it's something else. Something blocks discernment. Amen. The Holy Ghost in us do not want us to be caught off guard. Amen. So some of us have been caught off guard and we need to get in the spirit. It's not the time to, to uh, faint. It's the time to get in place so that we can pray. Intercession is critical right now. It's more vital than talking. And so there are seasons where God will have you pray and not open your mouth. Amen. Because intercession must go forth and can bring down high things in the realm of the spirit. So there are times, most times, I spend my most time in prayer than I do talking. Okay? Because I understand that there's principalities, powers, there's witchcraft thoughts that's being sent to. And you have to counteract that in the realm of the spirit by prayer. Amen. 
And so when you deal with those high things that are attacking our children, then our children's minds can be clear to accept us or receive us. But they won't receive you if you're off and they see you living half the way. Amen. Some of you living half the way. So your children don't receive you when you want to come and say Shabbat. Or speak to them. And they watch how you deal. They, they listen to you talk on the phone. They listen how you gossip. How you slander. They watch your life. So some of us lost our children. And we have to recover them. It's okay. It's okay though. As long as you get on it right now. Okay. You still have time. Because the longer our children stay under these powers, the more distorted and the harder it's going to get. Amen. So I'd rather tell you to get on track now than to lose them all together. And how do I do that? Get yourself together. Some of us need to get ourselves together so that when you go to their children, they can do what? Listen. Listen. And some of our children need to see stability in the mama and the daddy so that they won't have to find it to somebody else. They're going out to find it elsewhere because they lost it in us. But guess what? You can recover it. And it's a hard thing. See, I'm, I can tell you I've made a lot of mistakes. And I manned up to everyone that I have. My, there's nothing hidden in my life with my children. And I was at home praying, and I, and I could say, Mariah didn't see me do anything. But guess what? I did a lot. She just didn't see it. Same thing happened to her as if she saw it. Why? Because what I did in secret is just as impactful as what she saw openly. So because you're hiding it doesn't mean that it's the same. There's not going to be the same effect. So she still got effect by the thing because I hid it. It was a secret. Amen. So I said that to say some of y'all secret sinners. I was one. I was one. And I thought I was good because she didn't see it. I'm going to tell you how I can get free. Amen. So some of you, guess what? You got to recover your children by recovering your life. You can't recover them by preaching. You recover them by you recovering. You got to recover first. Amen. That's how Abraham, I looked at his life and saw, wow, what an example he was. Amen. And we need to be examples so that our children won't have to go to somebody else over you. Amen. Somebody say, if your, your child got 10 mamas in the church, I'm going to give you a sign. Watch what your children do. And mama, 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 you want to be my mama? That's something, that's something wrong with that. Oh, my daddy, you want to be my daddy? Daddy, you want to be my daddy? Oh, you want to be my, I want you to be, uh. You watch children. You can see what they're lacking. Amen. And so it's not hard to see. Watch their behavior. I watch all the kids' behavior. Amen. I see what they want after, what they thirst after, what, what builds them up, what encourages them. You can see what a child lacks from their parent. Watch them. But, uh, 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 man, your kid be like, you ain't my mama. You ain't my daddy. My mama and my daddy, the only people tell me what to do. <laughs> so some of our children be like, you know, my, my daddy, you know, my, my daddy is Pastor, Pastor Emmanuel. You know, they think that daddy is the king of kings. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. But you have to put in your children they have to, and some of us start late, but it's okay. Start now. Start now. You can recover. In the light of the message, the most common response to the question, what was the sin, as I said? The men of Sodom and Gomorrah wanted to perform gang break. At the same time, it's not biblical to say that it was just homosexuality. Ezekiel 16 said, now this was the sin of your sister Sodom. She and her daughter were arrogant overfed and unconcerned they did not help the poor and needy they were haughty and did detestable things before me the hebrew road translated detestable refers to something that is morally disgusting and is the exact same word used in leviticus 18:22 that refers to homosexuality as abomination 
Sincerely, Jude 7 declares Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding towns gave themselves up to sexual immorality and perversion. So again, why homosexuality was not the only sin in which the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah indulged, it does appear to be the primary reason for the destruction of the city. Why? Okay. And so there are some, there are some cities, we, we also have to know the thrust in our land. And since how to pray and what are the powers that's ruling over our land. We have to identify them. Okay? And it's a bad thing for it to be upon a lot of the saints in the church and their ruling powers in the heavenly realms. Guess what happens? They reinforce. You have them over the region. You have them in the church. Then there's a reinforced power and they connect. They're strong in spiritual high places. So that will make the warfare and sometimes uh, praying through and worshiping through harder because there's a reinforce in the region and in the church. Okay, agreement. Okay, and so there are times where you can sense it or sense or if somebody, you ever seen, some, felt somebody come into church, you can feel that power on them. That's a reinforcement in heavenly realms. And you can feel that when that's on people. And so that's why we have to pray. And sometimes the praise and worship teams have to pray or sing harder and break through atmosphere and pray through. Amen. And so we need intercessors that have a what? Clean life. Amen. You have to have a clean life or on that road to being cleansed. Amen. Those who attempt to explain what the biblical condemnation of homosexuality claim that the sin of Sodom and Gomorrah was inhospitality. That's what they're saying. Do you know that that's what said? They were inhospitable. They, that's why God judged them because they didn't respect the angels and they were just inhospitable. That's what they're saying. A lot of scholars say that. Amen. But all you got to do is read it. It's clear. There's probably nothing more inhospitable than homosexual rape. But to say God completely destroyed two cities and all their inhabitants for being inhospitable clearly misses the point. While Sodom and Gomorrah were guilty of many other horrendous sins, homosexuality was the reason God poured fiery, fiery sulfur on the cities, completely destroying them and all of their inhabitants. To this day, the area where Sodom and Gomorrah were located remains a desolate wasteland. Sodom and Gomorrah served as a powerful example of how God feels about sin in general and homosexuality specifically. We must pray against sexual perversion. This is the, this is the prayer target in this season. Okay. The Lord said, in the land, it's now becoming more common. Okay. We would always have season where we would target a power. Amen. This season is sexual perversion. This sexual perversion. Amen. And so on our prayer line, okay, those are the next seven days, we're praying against sexual perversions. Amen. And that this power will break. And so in the midst of we breaking the power, we have to see how to bridge the gaps in us. Amen. So there are doors that has to be closed in this hour. So we're praying against sexual perversions, okay? And also praying that we will identify the doors that we can shut, amen? And that God will give us the strategy to do what? Get our children, okay? And some of our children are in the school system. Some of us work in the school system. And you are positioned for God to pray, amen, in school systems. On your job, or you may be in the restaurant, may see something many times. I see people and I start praying that God show me their life and I see them to pray. Amen. So God is positioning us because this power is overtaking. Amen. Our youth, our children. And some of the children, they're being, these powers are being transferred in the womb. Amen. In the womb. I've seen it. Amen. And so we have to break it. We have to identify doors and pray and allow God to cleanse us so we can come against those powers that rules over our family lineages. Amen. 
So when you are called to be a forerunner and the prayer warrior of your family, that's a deep call. It's heavy. It carries weight in the spirit. And you can't carry that weight if your heart is messed up. You can't. You have to turn it over to God. It is not okay. It is not acceptable to God. It's not acceptable to us. And it's time for us to get in the spirit and go. Amen. And pray and break these powers. Amen. Because other things come with it. And the devil is a lie. In the name of Jesus, stand on your feet. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. This is a season of dealing inward. And that you have to have a conviction in your heart. A real conviction. A real sensitivity to the will of God and the heart of God. What God thinks about the matter is critical. Not what you think about it. And it's very, it's very vital that we line up in the spirit is very vital or we're going to lose I mean there's, that's the bottom line we're going to lose and the devil is alive because I, I know y'all had enough I had enough amen haven't you seen enough you've heard enough now it's time for us to get where we need to be Father in the name of Jesus Father, we thank you for this time of reckoning, oh God. We thank you right now, oh God, for uncovering every door that's open. That we will shut the doors and recover, oh God. Father, right now, we position our hearts. We position our lives in alignment with your will, oh God. So you can use us for your glory in the name of Jesus. And Father, in advance, we come against every plan of the enemy. We cancel every lie from the enemy. We come against every power of perversion in the name of Jesus. And Father, we praise you in advance, oh God, that those strongholds, those powers will come subject to the Spirit of God in the name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you in advance for healing and delivering our children, our seed, our family, oh God, our church, oh God, in the name of this land, in the name of Jesus, we render the devil a liar in the name of Jesus. So we come against sexual perversion and every uh, fruit of it in the name of Jesus. We thank you, oh God, right now in Jesus' name for a great clear cleansing oh God we thank you oh God for the cleansing and dealing with the root of the matters in the name of Jesus for we know that God in this season that every seed every root that you did not plant must be uprooted by the roots in the name of Jesus there will be no residue oh God so father we praise you in advance in the name of Jesus and we thank you in advance oh God for victory healing and deliverance in the name of Jesus father even we stand encouraged knowing oh God that your will is perfect for our children your will is perfect for our family our churches oh God and the school systems in the name of Jesus this land oh God so father we cry out for the ones that are in desolation oh God we even cry out for the ones that's been violated oh God for many of them have been violated, oh God, and still are being violated. But Father, I pray that you will uncover the offender in the one of in the name of Jesus. That you will uncover every plan of the enemy, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we cry out for your mercy, oh God. We cry out for your mercy, oh God. We cry, oh God, that you will reverse the plan of the enemy in the name of Jesus. That you will be glorified in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise right now, oh God. We will not get weary in our well-doing. We will stand under pressure, oh God. We will run and not faint in the name of Jesus. We will see the salvation of the Lord in the name of Jesus. And we will, oh God, decree and declare until the change comes in the name of Jesus. We give you praise right now, God. And we unify as with the church body, oh God, one one in the name of Jesus we thank you for the strategy for this season we will pray faithfully and we will believe and trust you that the change has come 
in the name of Jesus. Come on and clap your hands. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for the change down on the inside. We thank you, O oh God, for the strength to endure hardship as good soldiers. We will continue to walk this out that you will be glorified in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Is somebody here, for, anybody here for the first time? I see. Hi. Hello. What's your name? Destiny. 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 Hi, Destiny. Thank you for coming. Hi. What's your name? Mimi. Giovanni. Amen. Thank you for coming. Hello. Amen. Hug and love your neighbor. You are dismissed. Hug and love your neighbor. Amen.